Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll continue with the topic of weighted average, and today is going to be the last video on that topic, topic of weighted average. That is, yesterday we did a problem that was very similar to the problem that you see on the blackboard, and yesterday the problem that we did was the problem that you see on page number 159, problem number 13. One more time, if you watched the previous day video, today is day number 389. Yesterday on day number 388. If you have not watched yesterday's video, make sure you do that. Watch that video first before you continue with this one. On on that day, on day number three hundred three hundred eighty nine, yesterday we did problem that you see on page number one fifty nine, problem number thirteen. The problem that we're going to do today is actually not in the book, it, but it is a very similar question, exact same idea. After I read the problem and after you understand the setup, pause the video and solve the problem yourself. Once you have done the problem yourself. Then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. But the idea, the logic, the methodology is going to be the exact same as what we did yesterday. Here we go. We are told that table below shows the frequency distribution. Table below shows the frequency distribution of the values of the variable y. What it simply is, what's the mean of the distribution? That's what it is. Give it, give it a shot. I'm going to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay? Here we go. Well, let's see what we can do. Okay, but the first one is very simple. The very first one is very simple. One quarter times four is just one, and half times six is just three. That was too simple. The trick part, trick part, trick part comes into when you have to deal with three quarters times times nine. What we're going to do is let's let's do this three quarters times nine up here, so we can see what's going on. Three quarters times nine, which can be written as eight plus one. Of course we can write. Of course we can. Of course we can write our nine. Of course we can write our nine. Nine can be written as eight plus one. Why eight plus one? Because now eight is divisible by four. So let's break it up. We're going to end up with three quarters times eight, and four is going to cancel away with eight. We get a two, and we end up getting a six. So we get a six here. What does what does this six represent? Six represents Eight three quarters. Eight three quarters are six, as you can see right here. Four cancels out with eight. We get a two. We get a six. Six represents eight three quarters. We don't have eight three quarters. We have nine three quarters, which is why we have one here. So we still have to take away. We still have to take care of one more three quarters. Let's put it here. Our one more three quarters. That's this part. I'm going to write a little bit lower because it's higher than where it's supposed to be. Six and three quarters. Voila. The next one is also very straightforward. Is five quarters times twelve. Well, that's very straightforward. Five quarters times twelve. Four is going to cancel away with twelve three times, and we're going to end up with five times three, which is fifteen. That was, as I said, straightforward. Next one was also quite simple. Two is going to cancel out with five, and we're going to end up with three times five. Oh, that is also fifteen. And the very last one, we're going to have to do the same trick that we did there. We have a nine. We have a nine year same exact trick. So instead of instead of Rewriting everything. Here we have seven three quarters. So we're not doing this one anymore. We're not doing this one anymore. We're gonna do this guy right here, up here. So we have seven quarters first of all, and we have nine of them. We have same exact idea as I said before. Seven quarters, and we have nine of them, and we're gonna write our nine. We're gonna write this nine right here. We write our nine as eight plus one. We're going to do out just like we did before. So we have seven quarters, seven quarters times eight. Four is going to cancel out with eight, and eight becomes two, and seven times two is fourteen. We're going to end up with fourteen. What does this fourteen represent? What does this fourteen represent? Fourteen represents eight seven quarters. Eight seven quarters are fourteen. Let's make a note here. We don't have eight seven quarters. We have nine seven quarters. We need one more seven quarters. We need one more seven quarters. Leave it like that. Leave it like that. Don't fuss about it. Let's just leave it like this. Let's just add up the whole numbers first. So 
So we get, oh this is very simple, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, that's very straightforward. 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 4 is 24, we get a 4 and carry 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and 5. We get 54 and 7 quarters, 54 and 7 quarters. Let's find out what 54 and 7 quarters is in a little bit more civilized manner. 54 and 7 quarters. No, it's not 7 quarters, sorry. I almost made a boo-boo. 3 quarters and a 7 quarters. This 3 quarters right here. This 3 quarters and 7 quarters is going to give us 10 quarters. It is going to give us 10 quarters. Let's find out what we can do with it, okay? We are almost done. It's 54 and 10 quarters. Let's put it here. 54 and 10 quarters right here was the sum of all the all the x's but 10 quarters is the same as two and a half four quarters are one eight quarters are two and ten quarters are going to be two and a half so this 54 and ten quarters is the same as 56 and a half now if that is the sum of all the x's all the all the x's when you add up we have four of the quarters we have six Half appears six times, we have six, one, one half, we have nine, three quarters, twelve, five quarters, and so forth. And we add, when we add up all the values of the x's, we're going to get 56 and a half. Now we have to divide that by number of observations. Number of observations. Let's find out how many do we have. We have 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30. Okay, so I've done 10 plus 10 is 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30, and 35, 35 and 11. 9 and 2 is 11. 35 plus 10 would have been 45. So it's 45. Let, let, me, let, me, let me start again. I'm trying to do it in a clever way. 10 plus 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. And that's 40. 9 plus 2 is 40. The remaining one. 1 and 6. 40. 4, 6, 9, 12. 10 and 9. I'm just going to do it out here. I don't want to take a chance. I don't know why I should. This is a 10. A 9. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out this 9 here at the bottom. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I've been forgetting here. So let's, let's start. Oh, this is, this is too simple. Look, look. 9 plus 9 is 18. 9 plus 9 is 18. Plus 2 is 20. 9 plus 9 is 18 plus 2 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 plus 10 is 40, 40 plus 10 is 50. It's exactly 50 actually. It's exactly 50. It's exactly 50. So we need to divide this 56 by 50 and we will have our answer. Let's divide 56 and a half by 50. Now here's the trick. If you divide 56 and a half by 50, anytime you have to divide some number by, by some, some number at the bottom, if you can convert this denominator into a 10 or some multiple of 10, like 10, I don't mean multiple of 10 as in 20 or 30, I meant 10 or 100 or 1000, go ahead and do that. It's very easy to divide any number by 1000, all you have to move is, all you have to do is to move the decimal three spots. It's very easy to divide any number by 100. It's very simple to divide any number by 10. Just move the decimal. 37 divided by 10, you don't have to think about it. 37 divided by 10 is 3.7. 37 divided by 100, I don't have to think about it, it's just 0.37. 37 divided by 1000, it's very simple. Just move the decimal three places, you're going to end up with point zero point zero three seven. Very simple. Can you convert? Can we convert this bottom into a hundred somehow? The answer is yes, of course. Why not? Just multiply the bloody thing by two. Multiply the bloody thing by two, and there you go. Now it's a hundred. But of course, we can't leave it like this. If you're going to multiply the bottom by a hundred, we must divide the top by a hundred. That's it. We are done. So now we'll have a bottom bottom of one hundred. The question is, how much is? 56 and a half, 56 and a half times 2, let's find out, let's find out. 2 times 50, 2 times 50 is 100. 2 times 6 is 12. And 2 halves are 1, there you go. It's 113, it's 113 divided by 11. It is simply 113 divided by, not 11 rather, 113 divided by 100, which is simply 1.13, follow, 1.13, that's your answer, straightforward, simple problem, I'll see you tomorrow, okay, bye now.